Good Monday morning and welcome to episode 4, 3 or 4 of the Roll Taylor series. And today we are moving forward to the queues. The queues are here. But before we go to the queues, let's do a recap of the navigation menu and the navigation bar. The navigation menu is displayed on every page that you open. If I'm on the users and I click on the permissions, I'll be able to see the page, but still the navigation menu will be displayed here. We define the navigation menu under the area of sections and the navigation bar under the area of embedding. So you can go and look at how we had defined them if you haven't done. And remember, if you're not yet uh, at this stage of the Roll Taylor series, please make sure that you watch the previous videos that you have done before you can be you can move to this particular uh, page so and uh, here is the navigation menu and here is the navigation bar remember in the navigation bar you can be able to bookmark different pages this is the area of navigation so i bookmark general ledger entries we can add another page let's say customers if we want to see the customers let's say shopify customers you click on this uh, bookmark and it will be added to our navigation here, navigation menu on your real center. And we have Shopify customers here as well. When we go to those customers, we can still remove the Shopify customers by just unbookmarking it and it will be removed. So these are some of the features that maybe if you, you are not really sure of what the users will want, you'll just create one or two pages and give them the ability to add whatever they want. And then we went on and created the headline which we said will display after was it 10 no eight seconds but the good morning or good evening is displayed after 10 minutes after your within 10 minutes after logging in and since i had logged in and logged out mine is not displayed and we have the actions here that we had the creation processing and reporting actions which we also created the actions will be somewhere here the creation that have the new user here it is and then we have the processing and finally we have the reporting action the reporting action gives us a report and the icons here they display um whatever is relevant and finally now since we have started that that is how we are moving forward to the queues <laughs> We are moving to the queues. Huh? So these are queues. And what are they? Let's go back here. So they provide a visual representation of aggregated business data, like the number of open sales invoices. Queues are interactive, meaning that you can select the queue to drill down to data or open another page, run code and more. So this it's, it provides aggregated business data. So it's helping you get information that you want, like overdue purchase documents. So when you click on this, you can open a link to another page. So that is the benefit of having a queue because it, it links you to, an uh, you can open another page from the queue. As well, uh, they display data that is contained in a table field. This data can be of raw data or calculated data. So, and uh, yes, 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 the, the data is displayed on the page. And then the implementation of a queue involve, involves the following elements. So how do you implement a queue? You need a table object with a field that holds the data that is contained in the queue at runtime. So this data is contained in a table object. And you need a page object that contains the table field and displays the queue in uh, the client. Huh? So we, we need also a page that will contain the table field. So this, this table, of course, the table as usual is not used to display. You can be able to check maybe the beginner series for tables and pages. It's not be able, it cannot be, able, be used to display this data. So the page is the one that will display this data. And mostly this page is of type card part. And again, we have different layouts this is the wide layout that will display a uh, big values and remember uh, we have the wide layout and this is the normal layout the normal layout will allow the page to align itself and it can be grouped like this and then the wide layout represents big values and the queue can only this table can only have values of decimal or integers because they are aggregated those are the only data types that can be used in the 
cues of that table but the table is similar to the um that's why they're saying here that uh, you can have a combination of curl nav objects such as tables queries code units and uh, we'll give you the that uh, table okay so then it can only be based on an integer or a decimal data type so i have created a table here so that we can now proceed with everything remember there is a part here that spoke about the table will have a primary key the table will have only one data type one uh, one row and it's similar to the setup tables like general ledger setup they contain values but now this one contains aggregate values so I have created a table here system admin queue that is the, the pattern that you name the name of the profile plus queue to mean like it can you can also easily identify the tables that are queues by just searching for queue so it's good to follow such a naming pattern naming convention because it will help you um while uh, when you have so many um queues and you want to def or to identify which queue you want to change it's really good to follow the convention so for today's episode we will only create this table and then in the next we will create now the card part we are moving step by step so the table as usual we usually use the t field so i have created a primary key if you you avoid the setup tables do i have an episode on setup tables? i believe i should be having but we have the primary key as it's a code of a code because it contains um one record it will just be a blank record so we will just initialize it and and have all these aggregates stored under that one blank primary key so it will not have any value it will just be blank however these aggregate values needs to be having sort of a calculation because you need to get a calculation like the number of open sales orders how many are they we need to know the their number we'll still go with the number of users logged on as one of our queue and this one is an integer and uh, of course we can just call it customer content here in the data classification and uh, i will ignore this data classification here but in our this field class the field class should be a flow field because it's an aggregate data you can have a normal field or a flow field if it's a normal field it means we'll have a function that will give you the calculation we'll do a, one normal field here but it's a full flow field and the calc formula will be what it will be the count of active session we are counting the active session where the client type is web client we don't want to use any other uh, client i believe web client should be one of it so this is giving us the number of users who have been logged on and that's how simple it is to define uh, your your queue part some error here remember you're only looking at what um aggregates do you want just think be thinking about the aggregate that you want to display you the formula um, okay what kind of data you want to show them and then you put your aggregate there remember the drill down will not be placed under this queue here the drill down will be placed in the page so don't worry about the drill down page and then we can have another one that we can say we want to see the total number of minutes just get creative and do what you want huh? minutes minutes in the system the total number of minutes that people have been logged on minutes will be an integer as well so so it will be an integer with the field class as a flow field and the calc formula will be it will be the sum the minutes will have a sum or what i i think she'll have a sum sum or count 
<laughs> no, it should it should be the summation of user time registers dot minutes. Let me look at the minutes. It's a decimal. So here we have to say it's a decimal. Remember, if it's an integer and a decimal, maybe if you there are some minutes which are decimal, it may not be able to match. So the total number of minutes that uh in the system, uh, total number of minutes logged on. Logged on. So for how many? Like we want to see the span. How many minutes different users have logged on? Total, like totally. We want to see um. Uh, maybe in a certain period of time we could add a certain period of time maybe using a query here or using now a calculation uh, maybe we can add another one now that this one will be a normal field that uh, total number of minutes this month total number of minutes this month And as usual, it's a decimal. But again, now this one won't be a flow field. We can create a procedure that will enable us calculate this total number of minutes this month. So it will remain as a normal field there. And um, here in our procedure, we will call it uh, get uh, logged on minutes. this month and then uh, we'll just call the variable as a monthly minutes which will be a decimal so we are returning our decimal from the monthly minutes and uh, the only variable that we'll need will be the user time we'll, we'll need a record of type user time registers and then we'll just need the short so here in the user time registers we'll reset and uh, set range with the um, the date it will be the date so it should be a calc date of uh, from the beginning of the month remember in our date formula episode we looked at this how to get the beginning of the month you just use uh minus the cm cm is the current month the current month will it will give you the date of the beginning of the month and then the range will start from there and then it will end with the end of the month from today as well so at any point this calculation will give you the number of minutes logged on this month and maybe you can have last month and next month to compare based on your formulas and uh, as another queue. But for me, I just need that this month. So, so I just need to get the uh, the sum. So it should be okay. Let me just get it. If user time reach find first, then we will just get the user time. Let me just begin and end user time register dot calc sums we need the summation of the minutes and we will say that the monthly minutes will be equal to the user time register dot minutes and that's how we have got the logged on we have now created different kinds of uh, fields we have one that is a whole field that is an um let me say a flow field that gets a calc formula and does the calculation and when you load the page it will be calculating and we have a normal field here that will give us the number of log on minutes we can stop at there this is how you create the queue setup or the queue table you start with the table and then we will create the page so that's it for this video make sure you have reached here if you are curious enough or you and you can try and go and create that queue page if you want no harm but in the next episode we will create the queue page and it's a page of card card part and that card part page will now display this information here differently we will have others displayed in a wide layout like this one 
and others displayed in a normal layout like this one. So this, all of this is just part of one page. Remember that. So thank you for watching this episode. I will see you in the next video. And make sure that you beautify your royal centers and make them as efficient as possible. So may God bless you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.